this short video, we're going to look at IAS 17 on leases. So at the end of this, we should be able to state what a lease is, explain the difference between a finance lease and an operating lease. We'll provide examples of circumstances that indicate a finance lease exists, and then describe the different accounting treatments for finance leases and operating leases. So we'll start off with the question is, what is a lease? Well, it's an agreement whereby a lessor gives the right to use an asset for a period of time to a lessee in return for a payment or a series of payments. So an example would be if X Limited entered into agree an agreement to lease a lorry for four years from Y Limited. Now, in this circumstances, X Limited would be described as the lessee and Y the lessor. And as part of that agreement, Y Limited will provide that lorry to X Limited for a period of four years. And X Limited will agree to pay um, an amount to Y Limited for that use each month. Now, when we look at leases, um, although um, uh, on the lease agreement itself, the document, um, it will simply say that this is a lease agreement, accountants split leases into two different types. There are finance leases. Um, now, these are leases where all the risks and rewards of ownership are substantially transferred to the lessee. And we also have what are called operating leases. And the definition of this is very simple. It's simply any lease that is not a finance lease. So we'll start off by talking about finance leases. Now, um, this is um, what happens where there is just little difference in substance between leasing the asset and actually buying it using a loan. Um, uh, now, with these two different options, leasing the asset um, under a finance lease and buying it using a loan, um, the legal op ownership of the asset will differ under a lease agreement. Uh, the ownership of the asset will remain with the lessor. Um, and if you buy it using a loan, then uh, the company itself will own that asset. But everything else will be the same. So let's have a look at an illustration. So a company acquires two identical machines. One is bought outright uh, for £4,000 using a bank loan, which is repaid at £1,000 per year for five years. So there, the, bank, uh, the company would be um, charged £1,000 in interest over that five-year period. And another is leased at a thousand pounds per year for five years, and we believe that both machines will be worn out um, after five years of use and won't have any value remaining in them. Well, let's face it, the two methods are identical in cost. Um, so both will cost five thousand pounds to the company over the five years, and it's the same in benefit because both under both um, purchases or both, um, uh, sorry, under the purchase and under the lease agreement, the company will be able to use that machine for its useful life of five years. So the accounting treatment of both should be similar, even though that leased, agree uh, that leased machine is never going to be owned by the company. Um, this idea um, of treating similar transactions in a similar way is known as substance over form. But of course, how do we know when a finance lease exists? Well, um, it's going to be when a lease transfers ownership to the lessee at the end of the lease for free or at less than its expected fair value. When the lease term covers most of the asset's economic life, when the lease, um, when the sorry, the present value of the lease payments cover most of the fair value of the asset, 
or where the asset is very specialized and couldn't easily be used by somebody else. Now, I'll just make a, a note about land, um, because with land, um, the lease of land is normally an operating lease. I suppose the most uh, common exception to this is where um, uh, the, uh, the title to the land passes to the lessee at the end of the lease. Under those circumstances, we would treat it as a finance lease, um, but that situation where the ownership passes to the lessee at the end of the lease is pretty rare. So normally the lease of land is going to be an operating lease. Um, that doesn't hold uh, the case um, in respect of buildings, however. Um, uh, so the lease of buildings can either be an operating lease or a finance lease. In those circumstances, we would look at the characteristics of the lease and see whether or not it uh, substantially transfers the risk and reward of ownership to the lessee. Okay, so how do we treat a finance lease um, at the start of the lease agreement? Well, first of all, we record the asset as a non-current asset, so it would be recorded as a property, plant or equipment, and we'd record um, its cost as its fair value. Now, this is normally the market value or the amount that you could buy it for. Um, and we will also record uh, the value of that lease, the fair value, as a liability in the accounts. Now, once we've recorded um, the asset as, uh, sorry, the um, uh, leased asset as a non-current asset in our uh, statement of financial position, we will then start depreciating it as we would any other piece of property, plant and equipment. Um, but over what term should we depreciate it? Well, we do it over the asset's useful life where the lessee expects to become the assets owner at the end of the lease term. Um, but that's not always the case. And where um, the uh, lessee doesn't expect to become the assets owner at the end of the lease term, it'll be depreciated um, over the shorter of the assets useful life and the lease term. Um, but let's face it, it would be pretty unusual to have a lease where um, the lease term is actually longer than the asset's useful life. Right, so what then do we do when we start paying lease payments? Well, the lease payments themselves are going to be split between a capital component, um, being an amount that will repay the liability, and a, a part of it will be in respect of interest. So, um, the capital element will be set against the liability and the interest element will be charged to the income statement or the statement of profit and loss. And it'll be um, uh, recorded in the finance cost section of that um, statement of profit and loss. Now, at the end of the lease term, the liability should have been repaid in full. So we will um, calculate our split of capital and interest to ensure that that happens. So finally, let's just have a look at how we deal with operating leases. And here the treatment is quite straightforward. We simply charge the lease payments to our statement of profit and loss or income statement on a straight line basis. No asset is going to be recorded in the statement of financial position, nor do we record a liability. So let's have a look at an example. X Limited enters an operating lease to rent land for three years for £5,000 a year. So each um, period, uh, X Limited will record an expense for £5,000 in its statement of profit and loss. Um, just to make you aware, um, there can be situations where um, uh, lease agreements uh, 
contain a lease holiday at the start of the um, the lease. This can happen particularly with um, uh, commercial property where the person le uh, leasing the uh, the property is wanting to encourage someone to come in and start uh, using that property. Um, where this happens, let's let's give the example of um, a business that leases a property over a five year period, um, but in the first year there will be no um, lease payment to be made. Well, in that situation, what we'll do is we'll calculate the total amount of lease payments paid over the five years. Um, so that would be nothing in the first year and then a regular amount in the uh, next four years. And then we will spread that cost over the whole five year period. Um, so that is what we mean by um, charging to the income statement on a straight line basis. Finally, I will just mention that uh, this standard is um, going to be replaced by FR, uh, IFRS 16 in the very near future. Um, and the new standard on leases um, makes some significant changes to the way that um, leases should be um, dealt with in a set of accounts.